In today's video, we are installing a dining full carbon fiber intake on Rosemary's brand new 2023 X5M. Thanks for watching Keys Motorsports. If you like our videos, give us a thumbs up. It helps us out. Make sure to subscribe and check us out at keysmotorsports.com. In today's video, we are going to be installing a carbon fiber intake from Dynan on Rosemary's brand new 2023 X5M with about 2,000 miles. Let's get started by protecting the car and then we'll jump right into the install. Now, before we get started with the actual installation, let's take a look over here at the table at all the parts, and I'll give you a rough overview of what is going to happen to the car, and then we'll get everything installed. And as you can tell, this thing is gonna look amazing, and it sounds really good too. So with this process, we are going to start in the front, and we are going to work our way back. You will notice that one of the big improvements is this Ram intake scoop. Basically, what we're going to do, we are going to remove this piece of metal. It is not structural at all. And then under it, we have to make a couple small cuts where this little scoop is actually going to sit down. And then this piece of carbon right here is going to replace all of this metal. From there, we're going to take off the engine cover and remove these top portions of the air intake boxes, which as you can see, are going to be replaced with these beautiful carbon fiber pieces and new upgraded filters. Then there's this piece right here. Not really sure what to call it. It's a connecting piece. It just gets connected with this belly band here. And then this is going to bolt down to them. And that's pretty much it. So it's a pretty straightforward process. Most installations are of intakes. However, there is some cutting that's going to be involved and we're gonna show you exactly how to do that starting now. Okay, in order to get this piece of metal out, there are some plastic pieces that need to come off before we can do so. So what I'm gonna to try to do my best here, I'm gonna start with one tool, try to use that tool extensively, and then we'll switch to the next tool so it's not picking up and putting down. So first thing you wanna do, take out all of these little plastic rivets. What I recommend doing is taking a pick tool, slide it under like that. And you can either just pull it all the way out or if you wanna take a little lifter tool, you can do that. And then that is going to pull out just like that. When you go to reinstall it, all you do is pop it in, push that little pin and it is nice and secure. So now that you know how to do that and you're a pro, you're gonna take out this one, this one, this one, this one and this one, and then you're going to repeat it on the other side. Next, there is a 13 millimeter bolt over here and then one on the other side. So at this time, you can remove it. And this thing has like no torque on it at all. And it's really short. <laughs> I'm actually kind of thinking BMW forgot to tighten that one. <laughs> and then once you've done that, this piece of plastic is pretty loose, as is this one. Um, there's a bolt that we need to get to right over here on this side and on that side. At this point, if you would like to completely remove these side pieces, you are welcome to do so. I'm actually using it to hold my fender guard in place, so I'm gonna keep it. And then as we need to, we'll just lift it up a little bit. We're not flexing any plastic. And then we'll remove and then reinstall the bolts. Next, what we're going to do is we are going to remove these four T30s. So at this time, pull them out. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to take a T40 and we're going to remove all of these, all of these up at the top, and then you have one on the side, and then you have one down under here on each side. So at this time, let's remove them. Then while we're here, I'm gonna get the one that's hidden away. And I'll get the one hidden over here. Now, while this is still relatively held in place, what you wanna do is just very carefully unclip this line. This is what controls your hood latches. We're gonna to need to move it out of the way. 
So at this time we can take out the top ones. Then once you've done that, you can carefully remove this piece here. Just be mindful that it is tucked under here. What I would recommend doing is pull it up and just slide it out like so. Now I will say you are going to need to take these little plastic clips out. This is what basically holds your radiator in place. BMW puts four clips on here, so it works best if you do it with four hands. <laughs> but all you really need to do is just press in all of these clips. So if you start on one side, do one and then another, and then you can just get the rest out. So took that one out, put that down for one second. There you go. So the next thing that we need to do is we need to cut an opening here that is 16 and a quarter inches wide. Um, so when you take a look at this, I want to show you first off what we're cutting and what we're not cutting. Um, so if you look, there is plastic over here that is attached to the radiator. You don't want to touch that. It's just this like rubber and plastic thing. So you're going to cut it roughly over here and over here. What we are going to do to make sure that our measurements are as good as possible is first I'm going to just set this up. So it's roughly over here and then I'll go back and I'll do a, a finer measurement, draw a nice straight line. Um, now Dynan recommends using a rotary tool, like a Dremel if you have one of those. We're going to actually be using a hot knife. Um, if you need to get a hot knife, they're on Amazon for like 30 bucks. So I would rather, I feel more comfortable using a hot knife than a Dremel and just spraying little bits of plastic all over a brand new engine bay an X5M. So that is what we're gonna do. So basically to measure this, I would just use the center of this little piece right there. And then you can go to eight and an eighth like so. Now put a little dot. Okay, and then double check your work. And then just triple check yourself by measuring from dot to dot. And then we should be good. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take a straight edge and just make this as straight as I can. Same on here. And then we are going to start with the cutting. Now this is rubber and plastic. So with the rubber, I'm just going to slice through with a, with a regular blade. I don't need to um, use anything fancy on that. You are going to have to cut it here. You're going to cut it here. And then you also have to cut it here. So just be very mindful and just very careful as you're going in. Always make sure that you're looking underneath. Make sure you know exactly what you're cutting. Make sure you're not accidentally cutting something that you are not supposed to. And if you happen to be slightly off with this, it's not really a huge deal. Ours is really good, but um, if you are slightly off and this is something that you're a little bit nervous about doing, you don't really have to worry all that much because this whole area is going to be covered with the carbon. This is just so that that, that ram air intake scoop can go down inside and actually be functional. All right, so what I'm gonna do now, just carefully cut through the rubber until it hits the plastic. And with the same tool, I'll do the same thing on the other side. You just be very careful you're not nicking this at all. All right, so now that my blade is hot here, there we go. Um, so now what I'm going to do, I'm going to just go trace this around here. Um, I'm going to do it so that when you're looking down, you don't see an edge. Um, so I'm going to just try to pull this back again. Always make sure, we've already done this like 12 times. Always just make sure that there's nothing under here, there's no wires or anything. 
in this case there's not. And then what I'm going to do, even though you're never going to see it, I'm just going to clean up some of these edges with a knife. Okay, once you're done cleaning everything up, what I recommend, we only have a couple little stripe pieces, but take a vacuum and then just get rid of any of the debris that fell down below. Next, what we are going to do is we are going to put a zip tie through this little hole over here. And this is going to make sure that your hood release cable isn't going to rattle around. So tighten that up just like that. And then you can cut the excess off. And Dynan actually provides that in the kit, which is nice. Okay, so now, moment of truth, we're going to do some test fitting to see if we need to make any additional cuts. Now, we measured a couple times, so ours should be spot on. But it's always a good idea to do a test fit. So what we're gonna do, make sure that everything is routed in the correct place under the appropriate plastics like that. Oh wow, look how cool that looks. That looks amazing. Okay, so that looks good there, that looks good there. Everything is going to sit perfect and as you can see, the, the little Ram air scoop falls perfectly into place. So since we have that all good to go, I can start to reinstall some of these bolts and then we can also reinstall those two pieces of plastic that help the radiator to not rattle around. Okay, so just take these, clip that into place like that, clip it in just like that. Okay, then you're going to take those T40 bolts that we removed earlier. You're going to carefully reinstall these Remember, you are tightening against carbon fiber, so don't go too crazy, otherwise you're gonna crack it. Um, and then you may also realize that you have a bolt left over. That's because since there's a gigantic scoop in the way, there's no longer a middle one on the top. Now, when you actually start to snug them up, start at the top, otherwise what's gonna happen is it could shift forward and then you have a huge gap and then you crack it. So make sure that you start up top here and just go slow and careful. This one is a little bit difficult to get to. I'm gonna have to use a <laughs> hand, like a Torx key for that one. Okay, so then I'm just gonna go down, snug them all up. Again, don't go too crazy, because you don't want to crack anything. Next, you have the four T30s. If you look, no matter how new the car is, this car's brand new, you can see an outline of the bolt. What you wanna do is just push the bumper in to make sure that it is perfectly seated like BMW had it from the factory. Snug that up. And this one should pretty much fall into place. And this is gonna make sure that your hood alignment is perfect. Now what you can do is reinstall all these fasteners and then we're going to reinstall that 13 mil. Next we can release the engine cover, so just carefully pull up. Make sure you're pulling up on all corners, don't just pull up from the front. So if you look over here, you will see that there's five locations where this is mounted. There's one here, two here, and then two in the back. So that's why I always go around. If you just take it from the front, lift it up and rip it, you're gonna break it. Um, and you can see why BMW uses engine covers because that looks a little bit funky, but it is super cool that you can see the turbos right there. All right, so now what we're going to do is we are going to replace the top air boxes in here. We're going to just do it one at a time. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my flathead and I'm just going to very carefully release the hose clamp here and then I'll be able to pull that off. There we go, that's good to slip off. And then I need to release all of these little screws that hold on the top cover of the airbox. And these are held on by T20 screws. 
Now there's this little line, you just need to unclip that. Now make sure you're doing this when the car is completely cool. We probably should have said that earlier because these guys get super hot. And once you've done that, you can just take this off and remove the stock air filter. Now what you wanna do, take a microfiber, immediately put it over this inlet because this goes right into the turbo. So you wanna make sure there's no chance that any junk gets in there. And while you're here, you also wanna clean out air box. We have some rock salt in here. That would have that sucked to get in the engine. Next, what you're going to do is take this little edge trim. And it's always a good idea to start where there's like a 90 degree corner. And this is just going to slide on like this. And this is just gonna make sure that you get a really nice seal. Now, when you get to 90 degree turns, it doesn't really work all that well. And since this isn't perfectly, perfectly, perfectly sealed, I'm going to just cut it and then resume. Otherwise, it's probably just gonna pop off on you anyway. Okay, and then you have to cut it again at the back. And we just have a little bit left over. Okay, so now what you wanna do is you want to start and take a look at which carbon top you're going to need. So as you can see, I'm going to need the driver's side over here. Then we're gonna flip that over and grab one of our air filters. And as you can see, it's an oval shape. And then this is going to slide on like this so that the larger portion is going to be facing down. But before I do that, we need to make sure that we put a clamp on here. Take this, and it should slide on with relative ease. Okay, just like that. And then you can tighten the hose clamp down. I personally like to use a seven mil. Um, but if you want to use a flathead or a Phillips head, you are more than welcome to do that. The cool thing about a 7 mil is it doesn't slip off. And then just be mindful, you are, tightening, you are tightening this on carbon. You don't want it to crack, so I'm still a little bit loose, but you just want to snug it up. You don't want to go crazy. There you go. Golden. All right, so now that that's all prepped and ready to go, I'm going to continue removing the screws out of the top here. Now, before we put this back on and then reinstall the screws, what you wanna do is take these little rubber washers that Dynan provides, and you want to slide these on, and this is going to ensure that the carbon isn't going to get destroyed when you go to tighten it down. Um, another thing you're going to notice is that there is a screw on the, the rear end of this and on the carbon one, you can see if there's a spot for it, but there's not actually a screw that goes through there. So you're only going to need five instead of all six. All right, at this point, our filter is installed and we are ready to install our new carbon top on the driver's side. Um, you are going to need one of these silicone couplers. Now, that being said, you will notice that the two couplers are actually different sizes. If you take a look, you can actually see that the one is smaller and can actually fit inside of the other one. The smaller one is on the passenger side, so I'm gonna put that there. With the clamps, you have five 90 to 100 mil, and you have one that is an 80 mil. The 80 mil needs to go on that one side that is a little bit smaller. So with that being said, grab your two hose clamps, and we are going to need the bigger coupler, and we're going to take this and all of those new screws that we pre-assembled with the rubber washers, and we're now going to install everything. Now, I like to start with this clamp because there are some little grooves that Dynan looks like they accounted for and I wanna make sure that it lines up and looks nice. So I'm gonna take my clamp, I'm gonna put it on like that, slide this down, make sure everything looks really nice. Now, I really don't want the part number facing out. So I'm gonna put it like this so it looks a little bit cleaner. And then I'm going to try to position it so that you don't ever see the screw. So I'm gonna go grab my seven mil and I'll tighten that up. I'm gonna take my other clamp. I'll take this. Just twist it into place. All right, so now I'm just tightening this up. Okay. And just snug that up. Okay, then make sure that everything is properly lined up. 
and you can start to reinstall these. Then once you have them all set in place, you can carefully tighten them all up. Okay, so then once you have this side done, you're going to do the exact same thing to the opposite side. Then once you have that on, we just have one more piece that needs to go on and then the intake is fully installed. So if you take a look, there's the silicone rubbery band. It does say dining, so make sure that, that is right side up. So we're gonna start by installing it on this piece of carpet, make sure that everything is fully seated. Now, this piece is pretty easy to do because it's off the car. The one on the car gets a little more tricky. Um, what I would recommend doing is just take a spare microfiber Put it over the intake, spare microfiber over the intake. And then I like to come at an angle and make sure that you are getting it on the bottom and the top. Make sure that everything sits nice and then just feel and just double check. Make sure that everything is sitting perfect. And then once you've done that, just one at a time, remove the microfibers and you can start to lower that down like so. And then at this point, what we can do is take those bolts with those little rubber washers, and then we can very carefully with a 2.5 millimeter Allen, you can gently screw these in. Um, I recommend putting them in super loose. You can see that that one's not lined up at all. And then that way you can, you can maneuver it and guide everyone in place and then go down and do a final snug. All right, at this point, everything is fully installed. It looks incredible, but does it give any sound advantage? So I have the car properly warmed up. We have the car outside. Let's give it some revs. So as you just heard, not only does it look great, it also sounds really cool too. You get some really cool induction noises. Now it's not overbearing, you're not gonna sound like you're 15 years old and just trying to race everybody on the street, but it definitely makes it sound super cool. One bummer about BMWs, they do such a good job with sound insulation that it tries to cancel out stuff like that and tries to cancel out your exhaust a little bit, but... Even with that, this car just sounds so good. So as you just heard and saw, the dine-in carbon fiber intake for the X5M is a complete winner. Not only does it look amazing, but it also sounds amazing. And I know Rosemary is going to absolutely love it with her 2023 X5M. If you are interested in one for your car, be sure to see the links down in the description. Once again, my name is Brian, that's Zach behind the camera. Thanks for watching Keys Motorsports. If you like our videos, give us a thumbs up, make sure to subscribe. Check us out at keysmotorsports.com and we'll see you in the next video.